month's master tech session will cover electric door locks, the electric tailgate lock for the station wagons, and electric windows. A brief review of the basic fundamentals of operation for each system will be given first. And this will be followed by diagnosis and service tips to correct the more common problems encountered with each system. Let's start with electric door locks. On a car equipped with electric door locks, all doors can be locked automatically at either of the front doors. This is accomplished by pushing or pulling the lock button to lock or unlock the doors in the same manner as locking them manually. The Imperial is the only model that's different. A switch on either front trim panel locks all doors electrically. The push buttons are only for manual locking or unlocking of any individual door. The left front door can be unlocked manually with the inside remote handle. This is the same action employed on models not equipped with electric door locks. With electric door locks, this action is completely independent of the electric door lock system. Since the push button on the left door is strictly to actuate the door locks electrically, it cannot lock the left front door mechanically from inside the car. The ignition key must be used to lock it mechanically from the outside. In the event of a power failure, the right front door lock button will lock or unlock the door mechanically. An override device on the linkage is used to accomplish this action. The inside remote handle cannot be used to mechanically unlock the right front door. On four-door models, the rear doors can be locked or unlocked electrically by either front door lock button. They can also be mechanically locked or unlocked individually by the respective door lock button. Starting with the left front door, let's take a look at how the electric door locks work on all but Imperial models. The door lock button is connected by a link to a spring-loaded toggle switch. By pushing the lock button down, the toggle switch is activated. This momentarily completes a circuit between the circuit breaker and the door lock relay located behind the right front cowl trim panel. The energized door lock relay completes the circuits to the lock winding of the solenoids in both front doors and the rear doors in the four door models. Each solenoid is grounded independently to the door inner panel. The solenoid is connected to the door latch mechanism by a link. When the lock winding of the solenoid is energized, the plunger in the solenoid moves out to lock the door. Pulling up on either front door button will electrically unlock all doors. The action is the same as the locking sequence, only it is reversed. The toggle switch is activated in the opposite direction. The circuit is completed through the circuit breaker the same as in the lock sequence. But now the door unlock relay is momentarily energized. The energized relay then activates the unlock winding of the solenoid. The energized unlock winding of the solenoid retracts the plunger and the link connected to the door latch to unlock the door. Let's look at service procedures for electric door locks. If the electric door locks are not operating properly, the most common service performed is adjustment of the door lock solenoids for correct positioning. If you can hear the solenoid operating but the door does not lock or unlock, disconnect the battery, remove the trim panel, and loosen the two solenoid mounting screws. Push the solenoid all the way down. Then carefully pull upward on the solenoid link until the door locks. Hold the link in this position and tighten the solenoid attaching screws. Coincidentally, don't hold the solenoid down while pulling up on the link. You want to lift the solenoid by the link. This will position the solenoid properly with the link extended. Now, let's take a little closer look at the switch and see how it works. We'll also discuss some minor problems that the switch itself can cause and how they can be corrected. The door locking switch is basically a simple two-position toggle switch. One contact completes the circuit to the door locking relay and the other contact completes the circuit to the door unlocking relay. Since the solenoids can only be momentarily energized, 
the toggle is returned to a neutral position by a double action spring after the door lock button is released. Because the left front door lock button is connected only to the switch and not the door latch, the button also returns to the neutral position after being released when locking or unlocking the doors. Whenever the trim panel is removed for any reason, make sure that the toggle of the switch is lubricated at the point where the leaves of the spring contact it. If not lubricated, corrosion from moisture could result. If the condition is allowed to become extreme, there's the possibility that the toggle will not return and the contacts remain closed. In this case, the relay will remain energized and all solenoids will have constant current to the winding that is energized. Of course, this could result in burning up the solenoids. If a complete failure of the electric door locks occurs, an electrical test will have to be made. To conduct the electrical tests, check the battery voltage to make sure it's fully charged. You'll also need a standard DC voltmeter. The door locking and unlocking relay is located behind the right front cowl trim panel. To test it, connect the positive lead from the voltmeter to the bus bar on the relay assembly. Connect the negative lead to a good ground. With no load, the voltmeter should read full battery voltage. When the locks are activated, the voltage drop should read approximately one and one half volts. If no reading is obtained, the circuit breaker should be tested next. To test the circuit breaker, connect the positive lead from the voltmeter to the light green terminal of the circuit breaker. Connect the other lead to any good ground. A reading on the meter of full battery voltage indicates that the circuit breaker is good. If a reading of full battery voltage is not obtained, connect the voltmeter to the battery terminal of the circuit breaker. If a reading of full battery voltage is obtained in this manner, the circuit breaker is probably defective and should be replaced. In some instances, a full battery voltage reading on the meter will not be obtained with a meter connected to either side of the circuit breaker. In this case, inspect the wiring for a break or a loose connection at any point. If the solenoid has been properly adjusted and the switches, circuit breaker, and relay are not at fault, but the door will not lock or unlock electrically, the solenoid must be replaced. If it is necessary to replace a solenoid, follow the procedures outlined in the service manual. Whenever replacing a solenoid, it is especially important to properly adjust the solenoid for correct positioning. The power auto lock tailgate now is optional on most Chrysler Corporation station wagons. It provides increased protection for rear compartment passengers by locking the tailgate automatically when the ignition is on. The tailgate may be unlocked electrically when the ignition switch is on. This is accomplished by actuating the tailgate unlock switch located on the instrument panel. The switch must be held in the engaged position until the tailgate has been opened. When the spring-loaded switch has been released, the tailgate latch will return to the lock position automatically if the ignition switch is on. When the tailgate is closed, it will be locked. With the ignition off, the tailgate can be unlocked electrically when the unlock switch is activated. However, the tailgate remains unlocked until the ignition is turned back on. The tailgate can be unlocked manually with the ignition off by using the tailgate key or pulling up on the push button on the inner tailgate panel. It can be relocked manually by key or push button or electrically by turning the ignition on. I think if the operation of the tailgate solenoid is explained, it will be much easier for you men to understand why adjustment of the solenoid is even more important for the tailgate than the doors. Let's look at the B-body solenoid and see how it works. It operates the opposite of the door solenoids. It retracts to lock and extends to unlock. It also has a switch with contacts for each coil. 
In the unlock position with the ignition off, the lock switch contacts are closed. However, neither coil at this point is energized. When the ignition is turned on, the lock coil is energized. The plunger moves into the coil and the shaft retracts to lock the tailgate latch. This opens the lock switch contacts which are physically held open by the latch. With the contacts open, the lock coil is no longer energized, although the ignition remains on. The unlock switch contacts are closed, but not energized. When the tailgate switch is activated, the unlock coil is energized through the closed unlock switch contacts. The plunger moves into the energized coil, and the shaft extends to unlock the tailgate latch. It remains in this position until the switch is released and the coil de-energized. Because the ignition is on and the lock contacts of the switch are closed, the lock coil will be energized again. The plunger again retracts the shaft to lock the tailgate. If the solenoid is misadjusted, the lock switch contacts will not open. The coil will be continuously energized by closed contacts and will result in a burned up solenoid. In the event of improper tailgate auto lock operation or removal of the locking control assembly or solenoid for any reason, the solenoid and locking control assembly must be adjusted to ensure proper operation of the system. Failure to adjust the solenoid or locking control in the proper method could result in a burned up solenoid or inability to lock or unlock the tailgate electrically. To make these adjustments, open the tailgate door in the tailgate fashion. After removing the trim panel, this is how the system will be viewed as you stand behind the tailgate. First, disconnect the solenoid from the wiring harness and the solenoid link from the locking control assembly. Then loosen the locking control assembly mounting screws and push the button to the lock position. Position the locking control assembly so that there is approximately one sixteenth of an inch clearance between the locking lever and the mounting plate. Hold in this position and tighten the mounting screws. To adjust the solenoid, the mounting screws must be loosened. Then attach the link from the solenoid shaft to the locking control assembly. Push the solenoid toward the locking control assembly. Hold the solenoid gently but firmly with the left hand. While holding the solenoid, push the locking button until the locking control assembly bottoms out in the lock position. Allow the solenoid to move only the distance that the locking action requires. The solenoid is now properly located in the correct position. Hold the solenoid in this position and tighten the mounting screws. With the locking control and solenoid properly adjusted, there should be about one sixteenth of an inch between the locking lever and the locking control mounting plate when it is in the lock position. In the unlock position, the distance between the locking lever and the tab on the mounting plate should be the same as in the lock position. If the clearances are not close to being the same, the locking control and solenoid should be readjusted. To test the system, connect the solenoid to the wiring harness. Turn on the ignition and operate the tailgate unlock switch. The tailgate should unlock. Release the unlock switch. The tailgate should lock. Leave the ignition on and perform the last test at the tailgate door. With the ignition on, pull the door lock push button lightly toward the unlock position and try to open the door by the handle. If a slight vibration is felt and the door will not open, the solenoid is correctly positioned. If the push button resists efforts to unlock but no vibration is felt, the locking control and solenoid should be readjusted. The solenoid operation for the C body is identical to the B body, except that it extends to lock and retracts to unlock. To adjust the C-body solenoid, push it toward the bottom of the tailgate and hold it lightly. At the same time, push the button to the lock position to locate the solenoid. Hold in this position and tighten the mounting screws. 
Checking the adjustment and operation of the C body solenoid is done the same as the B body. However, if no resistance or vibration is felt in the lock button, other checks must be made. You'll have to read this month's reference book for the complete procedure. Power window service is pretty much limited to three basic conditions. Slow or partial operation, an individual window not operating, and of course total system failure where none of the windows will operate. Most power window problems involve slow operation of a window or a window that will not travel to the full down position. This condition can usually be traced to a mechanical rather than an electrical condition. However, first, determine if the motor is getting voltage by activating the switch and keeping your eye on the dome light. This simple test will also tell you if the problem is in the wiring continuity. Here's how it's done. Put a load on the battery by turning on the headlights and the interior lights. Then activate the window switch. If the motor is getting voltage, the dome light will dim. This also confirms that the wiring continuity from the switch to the motor is not at fault. The dome light test only tells you that the motor is getting voltage. You still don't know if the voltage is sufficient. However, before making a voltage test on the motor, Eliminate the possibility of an alignment problem in the glass run channels. If the window works at all, lower it about halfway down. This is the best position to check for alignment problems since the window is not being held steady by the downstop or the upstop. The best way to check the window for any binding conditions is to grab it and wiggle it in all directions and determine by feel that the window is free to travel in the channels. Once you're convinced that the glass run channels are not at fault, the motor will have to be tested and possibly replaced. The service manual has the procedure for testing the window lift motor and replacing it. If you have to replace it, the entire regulator assembly should be removed from the door to remove and replace the motor. Do not attempt to devise methods to remove the motor from the regulator with the regulator still installed in the door. The proper way to remove the motor from the regulator is to clamp the geared sector and plate securely together in a vise. Remove the assist spring and then remove the motor from the regulator. If the motor is removed properly, there are a couple more tests that can be performed that may indicate the motor is not at fault. These tests are outlined in the reference book for this session. If the motor is not removed properly, possible injury could result. A full explanation of what can happen is also in the reference book. That's it for this session, fellas. See you next month when we'll go round and round on the subject of facts and fixes for today's tires.